Praise the Lord. Let's all open the Word of God to John chapter 12. We're going to read the first 11 verses. John chapter 12, therefore six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. So they made him a dinner there, and Martha was serving, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of a very expensive perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who intended to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii, at the, and the proceeds given to the poor people? Now he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he he kept the money box, he used to steal from what was put into it. Therefore Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there, and they came not on account of Jesus only, but so that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. Amen. You may have your seats. So I'm actually going to read from uh, Mark 14 as well, the first 11 verses in Mark Uh, later on, but we're going to have to build on the message. And I want you guys to have patience with me. I want to start at the, um, um, in the right context so you understand where I'm going with. But today I want to talk about two things that us as believers must disconnect ourselves from. Pastor preached the last two Friday nights about the freedom of the believers, that we must disconnect ourselves from things. And I'm not worried about demonic possessions. That's not what I'm talking about. But a lot of times, us as Christians are attacked in our soul. And we must be disconnected from these soulish attacks in our emotions. Because if we're not, if we remain connected to those emotions, it can lead us into spiritual bankruptcy. And we're going to learn from the disciples that this is a very dangerous thing. If you want to be free, we have a job to do as well. So we're going to start six days before the Passover. Lord Jesus and his disciples are in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in Bethany. Bethany was about two miles away from Jerusalem. It was very close to Jerusalem. So Jesus, every time he came to Jerusalem, he would spend time in Bethany. Martha was serving Lazarus was reclining at the table. And the word of God says that Mary took a pound of a very expensive perfume and poured it on, in this case, was on Jesus' feet. So I want you guys to remember the details. It was how many days before the Passover? Six. Mary anointed the feet of Jesus with a very expensive perfume. The disciples were there, and Judah speaks up. 
Judah says, hold on. You're wasting so much money. It says here that the perfume was valued at about 300 denarii. You know how much that is in today's money? About $45,000. And Judah says, if you look in natural, he says, yes, Judah has, is right. What a waste. $45,000. How many homeless people can you feed with $45,000? How many poor people you can clothe? How many poor families you can help with $45,000? If you look in natural, he's right. But the Bible says that Judas was a thief. He wasn't thinking about the poor. He was thinking about the bag of money because he had a custom to take money out of the bag. So Jesus rebukes Judas publicly. And says, listen, what this woman is doing is prophetic. Leave her alone. She's doing it for me. Don't worry about it. The poor you will always have with you. He wasn't worried about the waste. $45,000. And Jesus rebukes Judas publicly. I want you to remember this fact. Are you with me? Six days before the Passover, Mary anoints the feet of Jesus, and Jesus rebukes Judas publicly. Let's go to Mark. This is two days before the Passover. So four days later, and we're going to read from Mark. I'm going to read the first 11 verses. Mark chapter 4. Uh, 14, I'm sorry. Now, the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were, how many days? Two days away. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him covertly and kill him. For they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise there will be a riot of the people. While he was in Bethany, he's still in Bethany, two miles away from Jerusalem, in another house, at the home of Simon the leper. He was reclining at the table, and a woman, he doesn't have the name, came with an alabaster vial of a very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke the vial and poured the perfume over his head. Four days ago, Mary poured the perfume over his feet. That was in the house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Now they're in the house of Simon the leper. A woman comes and she pours the perfume over his head. But there were some indignantly remarking to one another, Why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they were scolding her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a good deed for me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good to them. But you do not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burial. Truly I say to you, whatever the gospel is preached in the entire world... What this woman has done would also be told in memory of her. The next, the very next verse, watch this. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests in order to betray him to, the, to them. They were delighted when they heard this and promised to give him money. And he began seeking how to betray him at an opportune time. So four days later, he's still in Bethany, but this time in the house of Simon the leper. We must understand who this Simon the leper is. If you read in John chapter 6, verse 70 and 71, it says this. 
Jesus answered them, Did I myself not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? Now he met Judas, the son of Simon. That Simon is Simon the leper. If you read in the history, in the, the biblical commentaries, it tells you that this Simon the leper was actually, in fact, the father of Judas the Iscariot. So four days ago, Jesus Christ rebukes Judas publicly. Remember? Are you with me? Four days later, Jesus and his disciples are in the house of Judas. His parents, his wife, his children, his brothers, his sisters. Same thing happened. A woman comes, pours the oil, the perfume on Jesus' head this time. So these are two different incidents. Another $45,000 waste. This time it wasn't Judas that said it. Judas knew, I'm going to be quiet. But it was his family. His wife, his father, his mother, his brothers and sisters started to make remarks. And Jesus rebukes them publicly. When Judas has heard that Jesus rebuked his family, he said, I'm done. Four days ago, you rebuked me. You corrected me publicly. Now you're in my house and you're correcting my family. I'm done. He got offended. Are you still with me? Four days ago, you offended me. Now you're offending my wife. Now you're offending my children. Now you're offending my parents. I'm done. And this is where he opened the door to the spirit of offense. And this is the first thing that us as believers must be careful. And we must disconnect ourselves from. Because if not, it will lead us to betrayal. The very first thing, we have to read the Bible in context, like Pastor was saying Friday night. The very first thing in verse 12, I believe. Verse 10. Judas got out and he went and betrayed him. The spirit of offense. He didn't sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver is less than $500 today. He didn't get rich out of it. Yes, he was a thief. Yes, he was corrupted. But the reason he sold Jesus Christ, the reason he betrayed his master, was because he was offended. We're still friends. The spirit of offense will knock at our doors. The spirit of offense will try to agitate you as well and me. He could not control his emotions, his temper. His feelings got hurt. Are you kidding me? Now you're rebuking my wife? Do you know who I am? I'm a pastor. Do you know who my dad is? He serves in the board. Do you know who my wife is? She serves in the ministry. You are rebuking me? We get offended. We get offended. I pray. I preach. I fast. Do you know who I am? 
Judas was in the very board of Jesus' ministry. He was the treasurer, one of the closest of Jesus. Yet he got offended. He got offended when Jesus rebuked his family. Are you offended? Do you get offended easily? This is one of the things that we must disconnect ourselves from. Because offenses will come in our emotions. He betrayed his master. He betrayed the person that healed his father of an incurable disease. Leprosy was basically a stamp for death. It's today's stage four cancer. Jesus heals his father. And a few years later, he betrays him. All because he got offended. So many times, us believers, we get offended so easily. And we are ready to betray Jesus. Because when you betray the brother and sister whom you're supposed to love, you know who you betray? Jesus Christ. When you betray your boss and you get offended at your boss, the very person that God uses to bless you with bread in your house. And you cannot go past some words. And you cannot forgive, but you become offended. Do you know who you offend? Do you know who you sin against? You sin against God. When I cannot love my brother and my sister, the people that maybe, the person that's teaching Sunday school for your kids, Maybe the leader of your department said something that you didn't like and you got offended. Oh, that's it. I'm done with this church. I quit. You don't quit him. You quit Jesus. Because you and me are called to love. That's it. I'm going to another church. I am done with this pastor. I am done with this sister. I am done with that youth leader. You are letting the spirit of offense win territory in your life. You must deal with him fast. Because if you continue in that offense, it will lead you to betrayal. Judas was a disciple of Jesus Christ. It led him to betrayal. The person that loved his family. The person that that prayed for his father. The person that healed his father. He betrays him because he couldn't forgive. That same spirit will try to open a door in my life and your life. Be careful. The Passover is just two weeks away. I want us to go in this, to celebrate the season of Passover. In the right heart. With a free heart. Not only the spirit of offense. But he has a cousin. It's the spirit of pride. Watch what happens with the other ones. With the other disciples. In Matthew chapter 26 and also in Luke 22. In the same context. Jesus told the other disciples. All of you guys. You will all fall away because of me. You will all find an offense in me tonight. All of you guys. Peter said, me? 
you don't know who I am. I'm the vice president of Jesus' ministry. Do you know what you're talking about? Me? Even if I die with you, I will not find an offense in you. Even if I die with you, I will not betray you. Not me. Uh Uh-uh. And it says, all the disciples said the same thing as well. All of them. Me? You know what this is? This is pride. Oh, this sermon is for sister, for brother. Not when you, if you said this in your, your, your heart this morning, this sermon is really for you. This sermon is for me. When I received this sermon, I had no idea. I was just writing and it was just flowing. And then later I had to go and find the verses because I didn't know where they all fit. And I know it was from God. The spirit of pride will knock at our doors. Me? Never. The moment you say that, be careful. You're a victim. You know what happened with them? All of them fled. All of them denied Jesus. Not just Peter. We read about Peter. All of them left Jesus. They all took an offense in him. They fled. And Jesus remained by himself. Thomas, Philip, all of them, Matthew, John, they all denied Jesus that night. We know the story of Peter very well, all of us. The spirit of offense will turn you against the people that helped your family. The spirit of offense will turn you against the people that blessed your family. And the spirit of pride will do the same thing. Will turn you against your master. The spirit of pride will come against you and against me. Now what do we do? Jesus prepared the disciples. He said, listen, the spirit of pride will knock. But there's a solution for this. In the word of God, we have a solution for every problem. And this is what the, the solution was. Jesus takes them to prayer. Say, let's go in the garden. Let's go pray, guys. Oh, if Peter and John and the rest would have prayed. You know what they did? Slept. Yes, Jesus prayed for them. Read John chapter 17. It's not enough to have the pastor pray for you. It's not enough to have the pastor fast and pray for your family. You have to do your part. Jesus said, pray. Keep watching so that you do not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The solution is pray. I said it before. What's the secret of prayer? The secret prayer. Matthew chapter 6. Go in your closet. And I tell this to the classes. An offended person, it's one of the signs that that person doesn't have a prayer life. When you always get offended at everybody and anything, just anything offends you and you're, you're so, what should I say, sensitive in your emotions. Yes, it's okay to be hurt. We all have feelings. I understand we have a soul. But when every day, all day, everything hurts you. Every sermon is against you. Every prayer is against you. Everything that we do is against you. You have a problem. And that problem is you don't pray. You don't spend time in the closet. 
Are we still friends? One. Thank you, Kerry. Are we still friends? Yeah. Yeah, a few more. When we don't pray, we are in danger of the spirit of offense and the spirit of pride to win territory in our life. It will lead you to betrayal. It will lead you to denial. What do we do if we're defeated? I am the first one to raise my hand. I have failed. The spirit of offense and the spirit of pride many times have gained territory in my life. I'm the first one to admit I need to repent. I need to pray more. This is how he fixed this problem, Peter did. Peter remembered the statement that Jesus had made. Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. You know what we do? Excuses. Well, he's always right. Oh, she's always right. Oh, it's the, you know, this and that. Oh, you know what we also do? We write a check to the church. Here. God doesn't want your money. God doesn't want, God wants your heart. A free heart. You know what we do? Instead of repenting, we go feed the, the, the homeless. It's a good thing. You have to feed them, of course. But that's not how you fix your sin. Oh, I'll go preach tonight and praise the Lord. I'm okay. No. Oh, I'll go sing a song and I'll be okay. I'll go teach a class and I'll be okay. No. You fix your problem with repentance. Peter wept bitterly. When was the last time you wept bitterly? Before the Lord and said, Lord... I betrayed you for an offense. I denied you because of my pride. I gossiped the brother and the sister because I'm pride. I'm full of pride. I couldn't love my sister and my brother. Because I was offended and I, I, and I wanted to show them I'm right. And he's wrong. Lord, forgive me. Today, I want to repent before you, Lord. For so many times I betrayed you. And I denied you. By not accepting my brother and my sister. By letting my emotions hurt and caring more about my emotions than somebody else. Caring more about my rights, me being right, my family's, how should I say, um, we have it in Romania, honora familiae. Te-ai legat de copilul meu, vai, cine te crezi? Te-ai legat de soțul meu, vai de mine. De soția mea, vai de mine. Hello? You betrayed Jesus. You denied Jesus when you did that. When you couldn't go past an offense. Well, you couldn't go past your pride. You denied Jesus Christ. I call it to repentance, church. Let's all stand. And I am the first one to repent today. And I want to ask for forgiveness before the church, before you guys. I felt offended many times. 
You know why? Because I was prideful. I'm the first one to admit. But today I'm going to crucify that pride. I'm going to nail it on a cross. I said, Lord, I've denied you. I've betrayed you so many times. Enough is enough. Today I will bitterly cry before you. Lord, forgive me. Forgive the church, Lord. Do anybody else wants to disconnect themselves from the pride and from offense? Thank you, church. God bless you. I appreciate your humility. It takes a lot to say, yes, I'm wrong. It takes a lot. One of the th things I, ch I, I, I train my kids, and maybe they don't understand it yet. I don't like it when they come home and say, oh, my teacher was rude. My teacher was mean. I cannot stand that word. I said, listen, you want a mean teacher? Ask any adult in church when we grew up in Romania. Where corporal punishment was legal. That's mean teaching. The big old ruler. You go home and all your nails were dark. Not because of nail polish. But because of the beating. Or you were missing a patch of hair here on the side where it hurts. Because that German teacher, right, Brother Dobosh? Would pull our hair from here. Remember that? Yeah, or that math teacher that had a big old ring and would smack you in the head. And you go home with a bump in your head. That's what I call mean. Not your teacher that said, hey, turn in your paper early or something. Oh, she's so mean. You read repentance. I just had a talk in my family just a couple days ago. And I invited my children to repentance. I said, we all have to repent. The teacher is not mean. You need Jesus. Hello? The pastor is not mean. You need Jesus. Hello? I, I didn't mean to point to anybody. Please don't. When I point, see, it goes towards me first. So, see, I'm me first. Don't take it, oh, he pointed towards me. No, I, that's not what I mean. This morning, let's all go before the Lord and say, Lord, I failed you. I failed you. I failed you so many times. And the spirit of offense and the spirit of pride did so much damage in the church and in my family because of me. And put your name down there. Would you do that tonight, today, this morning? Let's all ask the Lord for forgiveness. Amen.